your boundaries aren't a brick wall, they're actually a spectrum. To be specific, they're this spectrum between 100% yes and 100% no, with the majority of life being lived in that uncertain middle territory. I'm going to be breaking down this exceptionally detailed post-it note diagram in this single take unedited video, but hopefully we can have a conversation about how to set boundaries in the real world rather than this imaginary world of how to set boundaries on YouTube and you're going to say the perfect things because when will you ever say the perfect thing? When will you ever articulate at the exact standard that you want to? And also when are you ever really in a situation where you're in 100% yes or 100% no? The majority of life is lived between. It's a situation where you're saying yes however, and situations where you're saying no, but all of those ambiguous mixed emotions, for example, with your romantic partner, you're saying yes towards date night, but at the 80% towards yes, you've already agreed that it's an evening event, that's a yes, you've agreed that it's a three hour time window, that's a yes, but they want to go dancing and you would rather go for a cinema and restaurant kind of date. There's compromise. It's still setting a boundary, but we don't think of boundaries in the realm of yes. We overfixate on boundaries in the realm of no. And if you search for YouTube videos about how to set boundaries and how to have healthy boundaries, you'll almost exclusively have information which deals with only half of the spectrum. But you need to have both sides of this boundary polarity fleshed out to be able to actually live a nuanced conversationally fluid life where you can set boundaries depending on what's happening day to day in the different situations of your life. I'm not going to deal with the 100% no and the 100% yes because they're very simple territory. If you have a 100% yes response, you don't need to watch a YouTube video about setting a boundary. And if it's a 100% no, you just remove yourself. You refuse for example, a simple low charge, no, I don't drink or do drugs. If someone said, hey, would you like to take a hit on this or would you like to come and take a shot of that? No, I don't do that. There's no room. There's no room. I'm not doing it. If it was a 95% of I might do it, it could be, no, I'm not doing that. Then they ask again and then maybe there's an opening, but that's already beginning the spectrum. If you have strong values on either side of, yes, I would love to go to the gym with you, yes, I would love to build that business, or no, I don't date this kind of person, no, I don't lie and cheat and steal, no, I don't, whatever it might be, you don't need specific guidance. And those are the extremes which we usually fixate on, especially this no issue. A strong no. Verbally, physically, no. I'm not doing that. I don't want to do that. That's not me. There's a bit of aggression. There's a bit of an extra charge there and you don't even need to have that charge. You can calmly reassert a boundary by saying, no, thank you. I don't want to do that. Of course, if you're in an extreme situation where you're in an abusive dynamic or there's an immediate danger, just remove yourself from the situation. Don't add more energy into an abusive person. Vote with your feet and leave the environment. That all being said, those are the two extremes, but we actually have the four choice points in between, which is where the majority of work with my clients actually comes in. We have this yes but and no but in between, and then the maybe zone in the middle, and the maybe zone which tilts towards yes or tilts towards no. Four different moments for us to, us to pay attention to. Let's start with the no but, and this is everything in the range of my no is about 20% strong, to about 90% strong. So you can say, no, I don't want to do that. However, and yet that's easier at a less charged situation. Let's give a few practical examples. A particularly spicy one might be, for example, a bedroom encounter. You're with someone and it's going all well. You've already said yes to them. This is like a consent thing, right? You said yes, 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 yes. And then suddenly there's a no moment. This is where you need to decide a boundary. And it goes into the flip side of yes, but I just said we're going to deal with no, but, but just hear me out for a moment. You're consenting, you're consenting, you're liking, you're liking, and then they suggest something and it's a strong no. I do not want to have that item inserted into my body. I do not want to be filmed and put on the internet. Strong no, you just say no, I don't want to do that, but I was enjoying what we were doing before. Can we go back to it? Or that's not something I'm going to do, or no way, what are you talking about, but let's just enjoy as we are. That's a yes. 
Still, even within the no, there's a yes. And the complexity here in this ridiculous spicy example is that you can be in a full yes scenario and then have a moment of no where you establish a boundary and it doesn't need to take away from the yes, but you can also have a no. So strong no on that particular moment of being filmed with a certain object in a certain part of your body and having it put all over the internet, and you can say, no thank you, that's ridiculous, I'm not going to go there. But then you can still say yes to the person and have a different moment on the other side of it, which is why boundaries are not just impenetrable walls where it shuts down the conversation and you lay your territory out into the wild and nobody will cross over into your personal space. It's just not how life is lived. It's not the perfect example, obviously it's a bit more conversational, there are literally thousands of possibilities of what I could say in terms of how to establish a no but or a yes but, but the principle I'm trying to establish is that they fundamentally swap around. The spectrum of yes and the spectrum of no, built on that middle point of maybe in between, requires a few things for you to get this right. You need to have the self-awareness of what you want and what you do and don't accept. That requires usually a few years of trauma work and introspection. Let's be real, how many of us know what we actually want at any point in our adult lives across the full spectrum of our identity? Even if we've done a variety of journaling, meditative and trauma healing practices, we're always in a realm of uncertainty. Which is why introspection, personally speaking, and introspection in relational dynamics with family, friends, loved ones, and children is something which is an ongoing process. The spectrum of yes and no is always shifting, but if you have a general idea of what you want, and then number two, you can communicate with confidence with a low degree of charge. You can calmly state a boundary. You can calmly say, I don't want to do that, or yes, but can we go a bit slower, or I'm not quite ready for that just yet. I could give a variety of examples. Yes, I'd love to have a call with you. However, I do need to go to the work meeting at two o'clock, so we'll only have an hour and a half. Would that work for you? Calmly reasserted boundary, it's a yes with a no embedded, or a no, for example, of actually, yeah, I would like to go on a date, but I'm not interested in coming back to your place tonight and just in case you're that kind of person, I know this might be a weird thing to say, but I'm not that kind of individual. Maybe that's sharing too much, but they might put a bit of pressure on at the end of the night and you just say, I've had an absolutely wonderful night, but not this time. Maybe next time, but a more of a slower pace kind of individual. It's still a yes, but then you go into no or a no, then feeds back into the yes. I probably should have prepared a few more examples, but you're not an idiot. You're not a moron. I don't need to feed you every single spectrum of possibilities. You just require the ability to calmly communicate a boundary which you understand as being valuable because you value yourself and you value your own values. Let me break that down for just a moment. If you value your own values, you aren't swept up in the mood of what someone else wants you to do, and you feel like you have the ability to say no thank you, or more strongly, no. No, I don't want to do that. But you don't need to get overly aggressive, you don't need to drop down the brick wall on their feet and break their toes in the process. You can operate along that spectrum of consent, that spectrum of positive to negative response to the environment on the outside without breaking rapport. Which is where we get into a crucial moment in regards to that maybe zone in the middle. And those are the few second windows when you're in a conversation, for example, with someone who's suggesting something that you're uncertain about. Do you actually want to commit to that business deal? Do you actually want to go to that place? Do you actually want to even continue the relationship? Do you want to continue the relationship with this potential business partner because, you know, you've heard a few things from other colleagues that they might be untrustworthy, or maybe there's actually a few good signs on paper that they're going to make a lot of money for you and it'll be a great partnership. You just don't understand if the business connection in this particular example, which way it's going to go. Which way is it going to go? The way that you'll be able to find out in those minutes or hours of conversation is if you just calm down and you stay centered, you will be able to set healthier boundaries in every single instance if you downregulate your mood 
and you let yourself sit into a centered place which fundamentally has nothing really to do with boundaries. It's about issues of attachment, of issue, issues of nervous system regulation, and issues of safety in your own body and overall feelings of self-esteem and self-confidence. You can only esteem yourself so highly before someone starts to put you down and you have that testing moment of am I indeed deserving this strong posture or will I crumble and cripple beneath their expectations. You can't know for certain, which is why these boundary videos are almost ridiculous to make, because if I had to try to make a video where I gave you literally the exact things to say, and it's very clickbait, you have say this exact thing, it doesn't work in real life. If I gave you the sentence stem of, hey, that sounds like a great idea, I'm open to spending time together, but I don't want to do that in particular, would you be open to an alternative? You can say that first sentence, and depending on the other person's level of reasonableness or unreasonableness, they could give a response all the way over here, or a response all the way over there, and then the conversation that you plan to have just falls to complete pieces because you're dealing with a real-life human being. What I'd rather teach you is the ability to make on-the-fly intuitive, instinctual, and intellectual decisions based on your values to establish a shifting series of boundaries as life shifts around you but you know who you are in that central point. Bit of a complex video. I couldn't make just another simple video on boundaries. In fact, the Googling or the YouTube searching of what other people are doing on boundaries, I searched how to defend your boundaries, and it turns out that I made that video a few months back and I'm ranking on the top of how to defend your boundaries because I've spoken about this before. This is maybe the third or fourth video that I've made on this channel about boundaries and every single client session in one way or another for a certain number of minutes, sometimes the entire two hour session, or just a 10 minute moment where they're talking about something with their partner, or something related to a trauma healing issue with family, goes into the topic of boundaries, and I'm never just drip feeding someone the sentences to say. It doesn't work. Life isn't a script, life isn't a play where you can say the right words and magically wave your wand of compliance. If it's a deep relationship, if it's a, if it's a family relationship, a romantic relationship, or a business partnership, any of the superficial dressing around certain optimal phrases is worthless because you can say a non-optimal phrase, you can stumble through your yes or stumble over your no, but still stay firm in your values because you know where the ultimate line actually ends. You feel it on the inside. Your boundaries are built within, and this is where the conversation gets to the ultimate crescendo, which is actually you need to have boundaries with yourself. Your own self-boundaries are a reflection of your lack of self-love or, ideally, your high self-love. Self-compassion and self-respect wedded together as the feminine and the masculine principle. Both of those coming together on the low or on the high, they will influence all of the boundaries that you're going to then present into the outer world. If you have high self-confidence, high self-admiration, self-respect, self-esteem, and all of these wonderfully self-supportive feelings, you're much more likely to be able to remain calm and centered in boundary-based conversations with anyone who's triggering you because you don't feel so threatened on the inside. You feel cohesive. Your own internal structure is put together in a way where you're not at risk of being crumbled by a caustic remark or someone not replying for a few hours. You just hold your ground because you know the ground of your own being. And this is where I get super esoteric on what's meant to be just a how to set healthy boundaries video. But unfortunately, this is what I like doing. It's why I built the Shadow Work Library, that unique self-educational space where we've got module after module of rare and niche shadow integration themes. You can check the link in the description. That's my favorite way to work with people because it's nuanced, multi-level, holistic self-integration work where a boundary is never just a boundary. You have to operate across the entire spectrum of the maybe zone in the middle. And I thought I was going to give you a variety of practical suggestions of you can say this thing and you can say exactly these words, but honestly, we're adults. That doesn't work. No particular phrase, even if it's no. You can say this. this I'll make it this way. You can say no but on the inside, you're actually saying yes, and you know you're lying to yourself because your no doesn't mean anything, but you don't value your own word. You don't trust your own ability to follow through on your own convictions, so there's no point you building a boundary in the outer world because you're not convinced that your boundary actually means anything. So let's look at the self-esteem issues and the woundedness behind that lack of conviction 
And that's where you'll make the greatest gains to be able to get out of those difficult dynamics or otherwise be able to say yes to a variety of life circumstances, but not get carried away and taken advantage of. It all comes back to the inner work of your own convictions and your own ethics and morality in regards to what you will and won't accept. The boundaries in the outer world are a reflection of the boundaries in the inner world. And of course, it's easy to say no to things that you disagree with if you've got enough years of evidence inside of you of not going down those certain pathways. It becomes easier and easier as time goes on may be disappointed with a video like this you thought you were going to get a clear-cut series of responses but i just can't do it and if you leave me a comment down in the comment section with a particular boundary related theme i might be able to make another video in a month or two that has a bit more specificity but it turns out that even as i'm making this video i can't lie to you my own internal boundaries about the types of videos i want to make have clearly rushed up to the surface and i can't make yet another overly simplistic video of how to set boundaries because we're missing the point very rarely a firm no, very rarely a 100% yes, life is lived along the uncertain, ambiguous middle zone, and your ability to confidently navigate all of those difficult or uncomfortable conversations with people around you is influenced by your degree of safety, centeredness, and groundedness in your own self-identity. Because then you can present that to the world and be able to present it in a way which is calm and grounded rather than a way which is dysregulated and triggered, because if you get into the dysregulated and triggered state, you're more likely to not be able to handle the tension of establishing specifics and compromises. You'll just go all the way to the extremes. And if you've ever had a moment where you thought you were having a conversation with someone and suddenly they've just shut you out entirely, or they've completely agreed with what you said, it's likely that they had a degree of triggering on the inside and they lost that self-resilience to be able to deal with uncertainty. They didn't have the energetic capacity to be able to work in ambiguity. They just went to the easy ends of the spectrum. And I can't reinforce that in yet another YouTube video. But I hope this has helped nonetheless. Life is lived in the middle ground. Your boundaries will be stronger depending upon the strength that you feel inside of yourself. And the strength that you feel inside of yourself is based upon a multi-spectrum, multi-layer self-identity process, which takes years to work through. That's just the honest reality. You will be stronger in your boundaries as you go stronger, more cohesive, and more loving in yourself as a person. And I'll see you in the comment section to answer any of those specific boundary questions. And again, I hope this has helped. As ambiguous as it is, I'll just show you the post-it note one more time. And you can really let this sink in.